this is really the only thing going on in the news cycle right now. Like, there's a the lawsuit that Trump was filing against the Clintons that got thrown out by a Clinton appointee judge. Funny, I don't see the same amount of furor and outrage when it comes to Judge Cannon, who ended up appointing the special master in the FBI DOJ search of his files from Mar-a-Lago. No, uh, don't see that kind of fire and fury from the right against the left, the fact that they've been lodging bar complaints against Judge Cannon on that one, but no, 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 it's all fine. Yeah, don't worry about that. He's just a Bill, a Bill Clinton appointed judge, okay, who just tossed a legitimate lawsuit against the Clintons and a whole bunch of other people associated with the 2016 campaign defaming D President Trump with Russiagate and all those provably false conspiracy theories. No, 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 nothing to really work into that. But we'll probably take at least a little bit of a through line through that. I might talk about that if it becomes more relevant. But realistically, okay, King Charles III made his first statement today. And it probably takes a little bit more precedent than anything else, especially if we take a look at the global scale of things. And my opinion on this really hasn't changed that much since yesterday. This is probably, I was just, I've even been thinking about this. It's who could even come close to being this significant when it comes to a death and the most people affected like me personally doesn't really affect me or anything like that but it's easily the most important person like the only person who's ever gonna hit me in the feels whenever they do pass well there's two people and they're my parents it's like outside of that i'm not really gonna shed a tear sure it's gonna be tough whenever rob halford mick jagger al pacino uh, clint eastwood uh, bite the dust probably all within the next 10 years that's kind of sad to think about as well because they're all old as shit but you know what hey man nobody even comes close okay when it comes to global reverence than what the passing of queen elizabeth is going to evoke in the world over because you take a look at some of the addresses that other heads of state have delivered and some of them are actually pretty good the only notable silence that i've seen so far is joe biden that's pretty significant in and of itself but uh Trudeau had a decent speech, which is just weird. To, I feel awful giving him any credit for anything that he does. And I'm sure it was probably a speech writer that, you know, posted the message and all that stuff. But it was kind, okay? Liz Truss, the brand new, okay, still has, you know, the packing peanuts in her pussy when it comes to being the prime minister of the UK. She released some middling statement and uh, Boris Johnson, you know, the retired prime minister who's still in the House of Commons. I don't necessarily, that's kind of awkward, right? It's like, I abdicated my position. I'm just going to go take a seat in the cheap seats. And it's like, okay, whatever. He actually had like a really touching, very good final word on the matter. And I would imagine the king here probably has a fairly decent statement as well. And it's tough, right? Because he's what, 73 years old? 73 years old. And you were great. And you were lucky enough to have your mother throughout your entire 73 year life. And then immediately you go from just being the guy in waiting to now you're the king of England. Like it doesn't quite have the same reverence. You don't have quite all the power that you do. But oh, royal ascent. Yeah, it hasn't been exercised since like the 1700s. So fucking cool it when it comes to that. They are supposed to be apolitical figures in today's day and age. You're not supposed to know anything about their inklings, their leadings. When it comes to certain issues, and that's why people have a lot of baggage when it comes to Charles, because uh, he wasn't exactly the brother who was out there getting flewed out to Epstein's Island or anything like that, but he has a couple of unsavory positions, especially when it comes to climate change that he's awfully vocal about, and you know, what to be in chummy chummy and rubbing shoulders with the World Economic Forum types. It doesn't exactly sit well with a lot of people, as opposed to his mother, who really didn't know all that much about her, which is good, and you know what? She's that last connection with a bygone era, a far bygone era, something that we're never going to return to, okay? The pendulum isn't going to swing back. That's not how this shit works, okay? If more people were like her, and you can kind of see glimpses of that with Kate, who is now, actually, well, kind of in a funny position of counting down the clock because she will be queen within our lifetimes. Just saying, like, again, Charles is 73. He's at best. And not wishing him any wi ill will, you know, and long live the king, obviously, but... De uh, two two and a half decades tops like his grandmother made it to uh, what 101 and queen elizabeth just made it to 96 so okay if you can just do some kind of grave math it's time's a fucking tick and we're going to be going through not quite at this level like even still okay the 10 days and i guess we're on the first day or the second day not too sure how that entirely works out with operation london bridge but it's going to be a long old while before we get any sort of outpouring of good emotion 
and just a bunch of victims just trying to make it all about them because, ugh, God, you see it every once in a while, okay? Somebody wants to hijack a position in order to play themselves as the victim, and we'll get to some of those stupid responses in a moment. But then it's, I gotta call it out on the other side as well, okay? The people who just also want to clout jack off the situation. Let me give you an example to properly clear this up, okay? Something tragic happens to you. Just say that oh, you had a relative die or something like that, and then somebody in condolences, the proper way to go about it is, I'm, I'm very sorry for your loss. If there's anything that you need in this moment, in this trying moment, please feel free to reach out. That's the appropriate way to go about it. Other people will just say, I'm so sorry for your loss. I know what it felt like when I was in your situation it was so bad for me and it took me a long time you see where i'm going with that one people with good intentions somewhat are trying to empathize with you but in actuality they just want to scratch their victimhood niche as opposed to the other ones who are just calling her a fucking colonizer which is retarded okay queen elizabeth okay i can't exactly remember any uh colonies that uh, she presided over that were colonized by the British Empire. I think, in fact, okay, like, there's that one example of Rhodesia, okay, that ended up getting temporarily colonized at the request, uh, yeah, at the request of the Rhodesians so that they can conduct fair and free elections, okay, and then they pulled out their presence from that area, and uh, Zimbabwe is there in whatever form or fashion that they are. Okay, that's their own fucking decision. But the English presided over that. And outside of that, um, how many active colonies are around the world? Just saying. And you're giving the Queen a little bit too much credit, right? Because the Crown hadn't had or didn't have official authority, not in her entire lifetime, okay, that was abdicated a long goddamn time ago. She was there to be the austere leader of the country. She was there as a pure figurehead, a connection to the past, one that has now been severed, and we're living firmly in the modern age. King Charles makes his first address as head of state. Solemn King Charles III made his first public address as the new... Uh, Oh, as the UK's new monarch on Friday in the wake of his darling mama, now Queen Elizabeth II's death. I speak to you today with feelings of profound sorrow. A 73-year-old said uh, as he began his nine-minute pre-taped speech, Queen Elizabeth uh, was a life well lived, a promise with destiny kept, and she is mourned most deeply in her passing. That promise of a lifetime or lifelong service I renew to you all today. So that kind of puts away any, you know, thoughts and ideas that maybe he might retire the crown and, and that just move it on to the 40-year-old uh, William, who he is unquestionably the next in line. He makes reference to it in his speech as well. It's like it says here, he just gives him the new titles and all. And one of his first actions as a new monarch, the king bestows the titles of Prince and Princess of Wales on his eldest son, William, and his wife, Kate. The same titles that Charles and his late ex-wife, Diana, who, again, I was running through the history of what Queen Elizabeth had presided over throughout her entire, well, real, realistically, her entire life. And yeah, I, I stand behind my statements that she was out there being one of the first thought patrollers, okay, taking care of that uh, needy, self-absorbed uh, proto Meghan Markle, like, let's stop the cap, okay? Princess Diana wasn't exactly the fucking, you know, second coming of the Messiah. She could have learned something, okay? You were literally, if you just wouldn't have take shit so fucking seriously, okay? And again, some responsibility does fall on charles for this one for the fact that he was out there making an affair public but you're gonna be the king one day and your bitch is getting a little bit too lippy when it comes to getting your dick sucked every once in a while like okay would you rather cry in a rolls royce or in the side of a paris tunnel like for fuck's sakes at the end of the day today you would be fucking queen stupid but no 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 you had to have your ego and you had to make it all about you oh i had bulimia and oh my god all the stories and everything was so sad fucking shelve it for a moment you'd be queen of fucking england Anyways, that that topic, okay, once uh, once those old wounds, like, I was seven at the time when she decided to graffiti that wall in Paris, okay? Like, I gotta do an entire deep dive on that, because there's a lot of reverence paid to her for the fact that her life was cut short, and that sucks and all, but let's not exactly fucking whitewash history when it comes to that one. And that, was a, that was a 304 before 304s were actually known to the public. Anyways, one, uh... With Catherine beside him, our new prince and princess of Wales will, I know, continue to inspire and lead our nation's or er, national conversations, helping to bring a marg oh the marginal to the center uh, ground wherever uh, where vital help can be given. Probably sounds a little bit more proper with an English accent, but 
No, man, in stark contrast to Charles, the English people, when they're polled, they don't exactly have the highest opinion of Charles. That could change over his reign as king. Maybe he shuts his yap and you know, gets his ears pinned back so he doesn't look so stupid in paintings. They are big fans of him and Camilla because, you know, oh, everybody gets in their feelings when you talk about affairs. And it's like, okay, fine. And again, that should just be a big red pill for the nation. It's like as attractive as Diana was at that point. Okay, a guy is still going to want to get fucking strange out there. So again, you can either cry in a Rolls Royce or in a Toyota Camry. Your fucking choice. Because there's a lot fewer, you know, future print, future kings of England than there are marginally attractive hoes out there. Just saying. Fucking Markle would be wise to wisen up to that, but eh, she'll never learn. This is probably all still about her because, again, she didn't fly to Baltimore. Or Balmoral, sorry, I mispronounced that yesterday. I, was, I, I got Scottish heritage. I don't know where these fucking castles and shit are, but anyways. Oh yeah, this was about William and Kate's relationship. Yeah, people actually like them, mostly because... They're fairly apolitical. Uh, they look like they have a happy family. And now uh, William's lineage is going to be the one that is next in line for the throne. And Harry's family gets pushed off to, I guess it would be, I seen the breakdown. It was the, uh, Harry becomes fourth for the throne because they have two sons, Kate and William. So, yeah. And he's 40, so we don't have to go through this rigmarole of 10 days of her. 10 days of mourning a couple of decades down the line. But no, it's going to be King Charles, like it or not rather indifferent to it like he could do good stuff but he's ultimately going to end up falling short to what his mother did like let's be completely honest she was there for literally everything 70 years it's never going to be replicated it's never going to be surpassed it's barely going to be lived up to and i guess you're going to be a good buffer so at least you're setting up your son for future success huh? charles also made specific mention to his youngest son prince harry and daughter-in-law Meghan markle which again why why does she still have her last name she's a fucking princess at the end of the day or she was if her ego could get out of the conversation for a moment anyways whose relationships with the royal family have been strained after they quit royal life and moved to california and lived off of the endowment of his mother which is again like his millennial life had perfectly encapsulated we want to fight against the system but on mommy's dollar pathetic i want also to express my love for harry and megan as they continue to build their lives overseas <laughs> that was basically him still thinking about your son but stay over there until you ditch that bitch and you can just come there's plenty of room in the castle but her, yeah, she got to stay outside. Park your bitch in the stable next to Camilla's old place. Anyways, uh, sitting at the desk alongside a portrait of his late mother, Charles praised the queen as an inspiration and also thanked her for her lifelong service. Very nice. Very, It's still very sad. Like, I really do feel for the entire family. And again, it's overwhelming amount of praise for the life that Queen Elizabeth led. And it's just a few rogue idiots that are out there just trying to make it all about them. But something unique is happening right now, but we'll finish with King Charles' statement here before we move on. To my darling mama, oh, as you begin your last great journey to join my dear late papa, I want simply to say this, thank you. Thank you for your love and devotion to our family and to the family of nations you have served so diligently all these years. That's sad. Elsewhere, Charles vowed to follow his mother's footstep and give a life of service to the British people and members of the Commonwealth, as the Queen herself did such, oh, with such unswerving devotion. I too now solemnly pledge myself throughout the remaining time God grants me to uphold the constitutional principles at the heart of our nation, he said, and whatever... Oh, and wherever you may live, in the United Kingdom or in the realms and territories across the world, hi, we're still part of the Commonwealth, and maybe, and whatever uh, may be your background or beliefs, I shall endeavor to serve you with loyalty, respect, and love, as I have throughout my life. Great statement, man, but that's outside Buckingham Palace, I do believe, yeah. The amount of people that have been showing up is ridiculous and I could just imagine because I also heard something like the last time that there was a big funeral like this at least the one that immediately comes to mind was for the Queen Mother but that was way back in the cut and the wait to see the casket lying in state <laughs> apparently it was like up to 12 hours in order to go see it but I can only imagine how many millions of people over the next 10 days are going to be flowing through London right now it's uh, Definitely justifiable, and I think all said and done, she was probably a much greater influence of positivity on the world than she detracted from it. And speaking of detractors, we have some of the dumbest individuals on earth, and they just happen to congregate at the view. So if you knew that you needed a terrible take on literally anything, 
turn on ABC in the morning and just listen for the hen house to open up and guess who guess who decided to draw a short straw and have the worst fucking take on the situation Sonny Hostin slams the queen for wearing crown with stones pillaged from India and Africa really bitch you can't even wait 24 fucking hours before you have such an egregiously stupid fucking take it's right up there with somebody else who all we're gonna lay into and if we're gonna be doing a deep dive on Diana in some point in the future I'm not putting a date on it or anything like that I'm just saying this bitch also needs to get fucking followed through on because she's taking shots at somebody else who I hold in pretty high fucking regard as well so oh we'll just wait for that one because that's gonna be circling back to yesterday's content as well and the only negative tweet that I included in there and if you're following along with everything you know exactly what I'm gonna be talking about but anyways yes um she was a uh, she was a colonizer and she hated black people or something like that i don't know that's the current narrative in left-wing circles it's so stupid uh while ex-obama aide claims u.s is captivated by her death because americans are obsessed with privilege as woke attacks continue literally some of the dumbest fucking takes that are out there okay she is probably all things told the most famous person or at least queen elizabeth was uh, up till yesterday the most famous individual alive okay 70 year reign okay of the greatest empire that has ever conquered earth like i don't know there's literally no comparables like Michael Jackson's death was pretty big, okay? But this service is going to totally fucking eclipse this. Whenever the royal family of Britain does anything, like the marriages, like William's marriage was televised all over the fucking world, okay? Princess Diana's death, like I said, I was seven at the time, but that was just wall-to-wall -wall coverage for whatever you could get at the time. I recall that very faintly. But it's obviously the most famous family, a part of the most famous lineage in world history. There's nothing close. The sun doesn't set on the British Empire. That's true. Everybody can draw lineage back to the United Kingdom. That's why this is so captivating. Not because of Hoyt privilege, because let's be honest, it doesn't say that there, but it's an ex-Obama aide, okay? They all came in with hope and change, but then they just ended up playing the fucking race card over and over again. Fucking disgusting people. Anyways, oh... View commentator and ex-Obama aides have launched the latest woke attack against the Queen in the aftermath of her death. Sonny Hostin blasted the Majesty on an ABC show of the day after her passing, wearing a crown with jewels pillaged from India and Africa. What part of Africa, stupid? Or do you think that the, the country of Africa was most affected? Like, for fuck's sakes, these people are so dim. Hostin, who lived and studied in London. Oh, yeah, another elitist that's out there. I studied at Oxford, and I know everything in the world, and the, and the queen was a racist colonizer. Which country did she colonize, by the way? Oh, no, right, she presided over the decolonization of the rest of the british empire oh that's like the opposite of what you said though oh okay interesting i think we can mourn the queen and not the empire what Again, just take a take a look around. It's 2022 after all. That's the type of phrasing you fucking idiots like to use. It's current year after all. Well, let's just go ahead and do this thought experiment just between us right now, okay? You can take a look around and yeah, no, you can see influence of the British Empire that's there. All of that dirty colonization, which again, um, Sonny, you benefited from, from the fact that you were educated in London. Okay, didn't look like it stuck. But there is no current day British Empire. That shit is long fucking gone. The 60s, it's it's done. It's like Trump. It can't fucking hurt you right now. Because if you really think about it, uh, the monarchy was built on, it was built on the back of uh, blacks and brown people. Oh my god, he's... You don't even know world history. You just think everything just happened and centered and everybody profited off of the African slave trade. You fucking literal mongoloid. Do you not understand that everybody around the world has been enslaved or conquered at one point or another? That's just the facts of life. Or maybe you're just mad that the uh, folks that you want to associate yourself with are just perpetual fucking losers. Oh well. She took particular issue with the imperial state crown and the queen's scepter, as well as the defi er, defending a vile tweet by Uju Anya. Oh, we'll get to that fucking bitch in a moment, because she has a history of stupid shit. Tweet was deleted by social media giant. Oh yes, but Anya has doubled down and refused to apologize for her comments. And we'll get to that, we'll get to that. Hostin added, she wore a crown with pillage stones from India and Africa. Can you prove that? Do you know? Is, is there anything about that at all that you know? 
And now what you're seeing, at least in black communities that I'm part of, see how, please, please give me victim points. Because this is about me. The monarch died. So how is it affecting me? Oh, they want repar- They want- What the fuck are you talking about? It was a thieving, raping, genocidal empire. Oh my god. The kor -Nor Oh, Koenor, right, sorry. Diamond from India sits atop the crown made from the Queen Mother in 1937. And this uh, great star of Africa sit on top the Queen's scepter. Nice, thanks. It's not like you guys were using them. The Imperial State Crown, along with the scepter, serves as the principal crown for the British monarch. And the Kor Koenor, I'm probably saying that wrong, but again, <laughs> why do we take the opinions of losers? Uh, being uh part of the treaty of lahore i thought we were done talking about sunny hostin um many people have claimed ownership over the great star of africa well you can claim ownership of it and just come and take it uh the centuries including mongol empire emperors uh, shahs of iran emirs of afghanistan and sikh maharajas richard stengel who once served as undersecretary of state uh for president obama has also been called a hypocrite for his comments slamming american media Oh, ugh, of course. Why do they always look like that? Salt and pepper hair, plasticine expression. You just know that they have a hard drive that they desperately don't want the CIA to take a look at. But because they're Democrat, nothing will, level ha nothing will ever happen to them. But they'll have a lot in common with Prince Richard. Or Prince, Prince Andrew. Fuck. There's no Prince Richard. Probably is somewhere along the line. Anyways. He said that Americans are so captivated by the British royal family because they have a weakness that yearns for a time of hereditary privilege. Really? Is that the best you can come up with? Can you explain to me why they used to sell, uh, you know, candles that had Barack Obama's face superimposed over Jesus? Is that hereditary privilege? Is that unique to the British Empire? Is that unique to the Windsor bloodline? I don't fucking think so. But again, good, tr good try on that one, my guy. Critics pointed out that the former editor of Time magazine, see how, uh, see how many amazing connections there are between the government and media and big tech and all that stuff. Former editor at Time magazine, he's just, just a part of the White House and nobody fucking bats an eye. What, what is this shit? That's why some of those people who, uh, unironically, and yes, these people exist, say bring back the monarchy. At least there's a bloodline and there's an exclusive group of, yes, they're going to be ruling and the rest of you motherfuckers can just go ahead and work on the economy, do your own fucking thing, that there's no intermingling between the two. They kind of got it fucking right, at least on this point. I think, you know, having a ruling exclusive class is a little bit fucking outdated, okay? Why not bring back feudalism at this point? It's just all of these ideas, they're done and dusted, okay? representative government for as imperfect as it is right now is the best course okay you can still make some little changes on it as well but if we can flush out all these uh, swamp creatures that'd be great he repeatedly attempted to make negative comments as msnbc aired footage of of course it's on msnbc okay because i also seen joy reed say oh the queen has died now take a look at all of the colonies of the british empire L literally hours after the fact because it, she is one of the biggest emotions peddlers that are currently broadcasting right now. It's terrible shit. Anyways, Stengel said you played a clip of her speaking in Cape Town in 1947 in South Africa. Uh, that's the year apartheid took effect in South Africa. Okay, cool. You know what else I observed? Hitler drank water. You drank water. Does that make you evil? Like, what is he trying to? What is he trying to do by evoking that comparison? Oh, see, the Queen was all about apartheid. She had nothing to fucking do with it, my guy. What the hell is wrong with you? But you want to make that connection because, again, white people are bad, and you, with the complexion of Pepto Bismol, I can't quite fucking pin you down. That was something British colonial uh, colonialism ushered in a British colonialism, which she presided over and ended. Like, what the fuck? You inherit a situation and then you can change it. But again, you know who ultimately controls that? Fucking Parliament. You guys are giving her too much credit and then at the same time affording her different privilege that she never fucking had. But this is also an insight into a Democrat's mind, a leftist mind, whatever you want to call it. They see the government as fucking God. They see them as eternal beings that are always going to be there. And then when they have the moment of weakness, including a death, okay, now it's just time to take everything down now that they can't defend themselves. Fucking cowards. But now, oh, but now let's talk about 
One of the most vile individuals that I've unfor unfortunately come across in a long fucking time. Untenured Carnegie Mellon critical race theory professor doubles down on vile tweets over Queen's death, saying that she feels disdain for the monarch and anyone expecting an apology can keep wishing upon a star. Hope she loses her job. She's untenured at Carnegie Mellon for a critical race theory professorship? Goodbye. Oh, but isn't that just the right being as bad as the left engaging in cancel culture? That's the only way they fucking learn. Teach us entitled bitch a fucking lesson. Have her go teach at a local community college, and then when nobody signs up for a course, bye-bye. Guess what? Subway will be hiring. That's going to be a shout-out for something else that we're talking about here in the future. It's called foreshadowing. After posting an initial tweet, hoping for the Queen's excruciating death, Carnegie Mellon University Professor Uju Anawa. I think I should be wearing a headdress or at least have a jug of water on my head while I'm talking about this. Reiterated her belief about the late monarch and said that she oh, supervised a government that sponsored genocide. What are you talking... Which, uh, which genocide did the British enact? I'll wait. Oh, I'm, I'm just wondering on that one. Which one did they preside over? Which one did the Queen decree? Okay, which one did she go on national uh, on the British Broadcasting Service and say, I call for a genocide against idiotic, uniquely untalented, untenured professors? I don't remember her doing that, but then again, I'm only 32 years old and you're clearly older than I am. If anyone expects me to express anything but disdain for the monarch who supervised a government that sponsored the genocide that massacred and displaced half my family. See, I need to make the monarchy, I need to make the death of the queen something about me and what I've been going through because I'm the perpetual victim. These people's mental point of origin, when it centers on victimhood, you can never unsee it once you understand that concept. It's fucking wild. But yeah, apparently half her family for this genocide that the English engaged in that I'm just not aware of, and the consequences of which is alive today and still trying to overcome, you can keep wishing upon a star. Oh, I'll keep wishing. Wishing that you're destitute, alone, and on the fucking street. And then again, you probably have a lot of family members that are out there, especially if you're in San Francisco. Free expression is core to the mission of higher education, they said. Oh, that was about uh, the university has so far refused to punish the professor. Yeah, no, I, I just go ahead and have this out there. Like, say if Noam Chomsky ended up fucking dying. I'm just trying to think of some prolific leftist that's still out there in the world today. Okay. And for whatever reason, if you find the one last uh, conservative professor that's out there, oh, he would have lost his job a long fucking time ago. You just go ahead and flip this shit on its head, and then you understand that there's an inequality that actually exists when it comes to free speech, because these motherfuckers want to use it as a weapon whenever it suits them. But then on the other side, if anybody steps out of line merely one fucking step, oh yeah, no, 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 just have them removed from the platform. You can see the hypocrisy take place right now on Twitter, okay? Like, that one tweet was taken down, but she still has access to her account. All right, bet. You take a look at anybody else who just posts anything even vaguely construed as being confrontational. Again, I'll bring up the example as Heel versus Babyface, another Brit uh, YouTuber as well. He got suspended. He had his account deleted off the platform for reacting to a picture of a new version of the She-Hulk, okay, that looked like a dude, and he made a joke. He posted a Game of Thrones meme, all men must die. Profile completely fucking nuked because of that. But this bitch can come out in here and slander a fallen monarch and nobody's gonna bat an eye at that, has it deleted? Just goes to show you that there's a double standard there. And then when people actually push back against these leftist scum, things actually happen. So yeah, even in her death, Queen Elizabeth is giving people hope out there. Anyways, University has so far refused to punish the professor and said that in the statement posted on Twitter Thursday evening, we do not condone the offensive and objectionable message posted by Uju on the wall, whatever, today on her social media account. Free expression is core to the mission of higher education. And again, I want to see... Your history of adhering to that statement, but I'd imagine it's fairly hypocritical. However, the views she shared absolutely do not represent the values of the institution nor the standards of disclosure we set to foster. In her first controversial tweet, now deleted by the social media platform, the Nigerian-born professor wrote, I heard the chief monarch is... Oh, of a thieving, raping, genocidal empire is finally dying. May her pain be excruciating. I can see, okay, because again, Twitter's terms of service are just so fucking nebulous when they get applied, okay? And I'm sure that this was probably somebody at Twitter's UK headquarters is like, no, no, we better just take that down. 
that could be construed as being slanderous towards somebody so you could take it down for that okay and then wishing death upon somebody may her pain be excruciating in her final days you can interpret that in order for reasons and justification in order to take it down but again the other side of the aisle has never afforded such a luxury it's just oh we don't like him oh okay cool and we can take that out of context bet gone oh, let's see what else this fat sack of shit had to say um a wretched woman and her bloodthirsty throne have fucking generations of my ancestors on both sides of my family. Oh, see, it's on both sides. And uh, she supervised a government that sponsored the genocide. My parents and siblings survived. May she die in agony. Again, um, anything in there? No? Anything? No? Any truth? Any truth detected? You're supposed to be a professor after all. All right, critical race theory. So you don't even need to approximate anything close to the truth. Uh, Twitter later removed the posts for violating their rules. Her appalling sentiments shared as the queen was in her final hours has ignited a firestorm of anger and cast the light on previous attempts by hundreds of people to get the outspoken academic fired from her teaching job for violent and racist words. Oh boy. Yeah, and this is where I wanted to dive a little bit deeper into this stuff. So this will just give you a little insight because I want to see all of her fucking history because she's a terrible fucking bitch. Yeah, she was the lady that got dunked on by Bezos yesterday saying that uh, this is somebody supposedly working to make the world better i don't think so wow Piers morgan fuck off who cares what he has to say one horrified user says uh don't expect that if you don't expect that it oh of you but uh, do expect common decency respect for such a loss i cannot give you the time of i, I cannot give you that this time you are disgraceful of a human being okay clearly somebody from her homelands who is just a english is not a first language let's say that Another added, you are such an uncouth, oh, you are just so uncouth and mannerless. You speak of someone who has just passed with such violent, disdaining comment. Carnegie Mellon University has distanced distance itself from Anya. Round of applause for that. Because the only way that they're going to change this shit is, okay, if they have to fucking face the fury that uh, conservatives and right-leaning individuals have had to deal with for over a decade, for fuck's sakes. So no, I'm not apologizing for that shit either. Fuck her. The vicious academic also found herself in hot water when she mocked the death of YouTuber Kevin Samuels in May of 2022. Yes, earlier this year, she was one of the most outspoken critics of Kevin Samuels, who, if in case you don't know, Kevin Samuels looks like this. So what would be her take on that one? Uh, black women most affected, obviously, right? Samuels, who was so much bigger than just his YouTube channel, okay? He was putting these old German shepherds in check, which, hey, good on him. It's dirty work. Somebody has to do it. But he was bringing the red pill to a community that desperately fucking needs it. I didn't consume much of his content, okay? I only seen a couple of clips that were out there, but he was talking about a bunch of the stuff that the other people whose content I do consume and am influenced by. He was talking those same points, and I appreciate that for him. And with the fire and the fury of all these hateful individuals who would come out after the fact, after he died, oh my god, it was, it was disgusting, okay? But again, like I said, I wasn't that big of a fan, I, I wasn't a subscriber by any means, he kind of had his niche, okay, he was very successful at doing it, okay, I didn't really fit the demographic, demographic of his audience, but I just seen from an out, uh, outsider's perspective that, wow, wow, there's a bunch of hateful people that are out there, you know, just cheering on his death, and, you know, some people are just powered by hatred, and Uju, whatever the fuck, is one of them. In the aftermath of his death, she wrote, Kevin Samuels told men their worth was in their wallets. No, he didn't. That was a part of it. Money muscles game frame. Money's important, okay? Money, if you just have money, you're a dork, okay? Money's a whore opener and a door opener. Outside of that, man, you have to have other skills as well but this is again we've seen the exact same stuff happen with andrew tate okay and then him getting completely taken offline people only watch clips and the stuff of kevin samuels that went viral your average at best buy a dog and die alone subway's hiring all that type of stuff him dunking on delusional women bringing them down to reality but then there's also another growing fan base and even after his death after his passing there's people who is taking the advice of the long form content that is out there okay but again she's a gender studies or i'm sorry a critical race theory professor okay she knows everything okay so she's definitely above criticism. He died in a one-bedroom sublet with less than $1,000 to his name. How would you even know that? No partner, no friend, or offspring willing to claim him. Only his poor mother begging and borrowing to bury his lonesome, or his loathsome carcass. What a charming bitch. Like, how would you even know any of that shit is true? And again, 
She's just lying and making up stuff. Throwing that out there. Hopefully to get some pushback. Only to later go, oh, I'm being bullied. I'm a victim. I'm, I'm black and Nigerian. Oh my god. Having a stupid take does not prevent you from getting backlash for that stupid take. It doesn't matter how many boxes you tick on your imaginary privilege card. Being a vile human being is critic worthy of crit criticism. But in all, just as a wrap up, there are some stupid comments that are out there. there are some really terrible fucking takes, okay? Misinformed information, which obviously is going to permeate most of these people are in fucking media at the end of the day. Or in universities where all of the bad ideas formulate and gestate, okay? But there's a lot of good that's out in the world. Most of it is stemming from the fact that the longest serving monarch in British history lived a long full life presided over so much change and did it gracefully and better than anybody will in the future. So with all that said, thank you all very much for the gift of your time. I've been Don Consuelo. I want you to follow your gut and get after it. Take care, everyone.